Hello everybody, my name's uh, Craig Jugood and this is Lucas Johnson, Dr. Lucas Johnson, I'll have you know. And this is a uh, practical for a Year 12 Biology class, uh, say Stage 2 South Australia. Uh, we are using a GoPro and we've got a directional mic now, so we're hoping the sound is uh, much improved. Excellent. So this practical uh, is for a Stage 2 class, as I've said, and, and class you'll have access to the task sheet. Uh, download it, I'll also give you a hard copy in class. Uh, watch the video because it will help you with the method. So we're going to show you a method, which is on the last page, a method of how to measure the rate of respiration in yeast by collecting the, volume, the carbon dioxide that is produced and measuring the volume of carbon dioxide that is produced. So Dr. Lucas Johnson will run us through that in a moment. You're going to need to use that method, the method we show you, to design your own investigation to test the effect of factors that might affect the rate of respiration in a yeast. So we'll discuss that uh, a little bit more in class, but yeah, you are going to design your own investigation. So the, variable, the independent variable, uh, you will need to think about the dependent variable in terms of the volume of carbon dioxide produced. You will need to think about other factors that might affect the rate of respiration and then come up with, a, with a, an investigation around that. Uh, I'll stop the video now and then we'll hand over to, to Dr. Lucas Johnson and we'll go from there. All right, hi everyone. So what I'm going to do is just run you through uh, some of the basics behind this experiment. So very first thing, safety. Uh, so this, compared to some experiments, this is relatively uh, safe, but we always take certain precautions. So in this case, I'm wearing a full lab coat. You guys will have an apron. Um, got gloves and safety glasses. So those are the basics we always have for every experiment. So it's always good have to be in. And in terms of what we've got for this experiment, we've got a few different pieces of equipment here. So we've got some large test tubes that we'll be using uh, to contain our solutions and also when we're actually collecting our CO2. You'll see that in a, in a couple of minutes. We've got some 10 mil measuring cylinders and we've got a funnel as well, just in case we need that, just to prevent any spill. And in this case here, we've just got two solutions that are uh, being used in this example. So we've got our glucose solution, which is 10%. And in your experiment, you actually have a range of different concentrations to work with, but here we'll stick with the one. And we also have yeast as well. Now, it's important when you, before you pour out the yeast that you actually agitate or shake the container around because the yeast will settle to the bottom. Okay? So this will make sure that you're getting the right amount. Uh, finally, we've got a water bath here. So this has been set to maintain a constant temperature. Uh, in this instance, we're setting it to 40 degrees Celsius because that's the optimum temperature um, that's been found for uh, yeast, wet, re yeah, sorry, yeast respiration. And we've also got a thermometer there just so we can monitor the temperature and make sure it's correct. Okay, um, so in this particular experiment, you've actually got two types of respiration. You've got aerobic, which is when you've got oxygen present. And then you've got anaerobic, where uh, you have no oxygen present. So in this case here, um, we're going to work with a container that's you know, largely um, free of oxygen when, when you've actually got the respiration occurring. Uh, there will be some oxygen present initially. Because we're only going to do it for about 10 minutes, collecting the CO2, you really shouldn't have completely used up the oxygen by then. So most of the respiration in this experiment will be aerobic. But if you had it in conditions where um, there wasn't much oxygen, you actually get alcohol being produced um, instead of uh, water as one of the byproducts. All right, so we'll get to the next part of the experiment. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to measure out our solution. So I'm starting off with the glucose solution here. Just sort of a quick, quick mix just to make sure. This is pretty well dissolved, so it shouldn't be that necessary, but never a bad idea. And then we'll get our measuring cylinder, so we're going to measure out 10 mils of the solution. And whenever we're measuring out, sort of try to get where we want to measure to at eye level. And we want the bottom of our meniscus, which is that curved top of the solution, the bottom of that to be level of uh, the 10 mil mark. So we'll just carefully measure that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that into one of our test tubes and then we're going to sit it in the water bath to get it to the temperature that we want to do the reaction. So the idea is that we want to have it already at the temperature for our reaction. So for the entire 10 minutes that we're um, collecting CO2, it's actually going to be at that temperature. If we just put it in cold, part of that time we'll be warming it up. So we won't really be getting uh, the most accurate data because we have more than one variable. And that's the key thing in science is that you want to try and control everything except for one variable in an experiment. 
so you can actually make some conclusions about the data. All right, so with the yeast, again, this is particularly important. You do have to agitate it, like I mentioned before, uh, because yeast will settle to the bottom. And just as before, I'll just get to eye level. It looks a tiny bit over, but that's because of the bubbles, the actual solutions at the level. All right, and we're going to let them sit in the water bath for maybe up to 15 minutes, um, basically just long enough to get the temperature uh, to the same as the water bath. All right, so now we've taken the tubes out, they were incubating, so they were at the temperature, and we poured them both, uh, it mixed them together, poured uh, the glucose, sorry, the, um, the yeast into the glucose solution, and then we mixed them together and we've got our solution mixed together here. Now, the incubation, uh, because they're incubated, the respiration's already just started, but um, it starts off very, very slowly and it accelerates, so the amount of gas we're producing now and losing is not that big, so it won't be much of an error. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour this solution into our measuring cylinder and we're going to fill it all the way up to the top, okay? So, just hold that steady, pour it in. Like that. And then, just carefully take that out. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a clean test tube. We're going to turn it upside down. And we're going to put the measuring cylinder inside the test tube. So just put it on top, and then we hold the test tube, sorry, the uh, measuring cylinder as high as it will go, and then we flip it over. Okay, so you see a tiny little air gap, but it basically lines up with that very first uh, indi uh, indicator of uh, volume, so at the, the uh, zero mark, or the one mil mark, sorry. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here. So what you have to do is you have to record that initial value uh, of volume of airspace. So that will tell you how much air we're starting off with. We put it into the water bath, we let it sit there for 10 minutes to incubate, so respiration will be carrying on, we'll be forming CO2 gas. That gas will bubble up to the top here and it will push the liquid down, okay? So after 10 minutes, we'll take that out, we'll record what the new volume is, and the difference between the initial value that we've recorded and the final value will be the total amount of CO2 that's been produced in that 10 minute period. All right, so we've had this sitting in the water bath for 10 minutes now, so we'll take it out. You can see that the amount of gas produced is you know, fairly substantial and it's actually pushed some of the liquid out of the measuring cylinder into the test tube. So what you have to do now is you actually have to measure the level um, of the liquid, so you ignore the bubbles. You don't include that in the measurement. You look at the bottom of that meniscus, um, which can be a little bit tricky, so, but that's why we do this in triplicate, to try and you know, uh, account for those sort of errors. And from that, subtract your initial uh, value um, of the airspace uh, that we measured at the start, and that's how you get your CO2 volume. And then you would repeat this experiment, say maybe another two times to get a triplicate, so you get an average for that set of conditions. And then depending on what your variable is, you would of course do the experiment, say for different yeast concentrations or different glucose concentrations or even different temperatures. And what sort of suggestions would you make, Luke, it's about increasing sample size and trying to do that concurrently? Right, yeah, so I mean the idea is if you can, you've only got limited time uh, in this experiment because you've only got a double lesson, so you really want to have several of these going at the same time, preferably, so um, you could either, say if you're doing temperature, you could have maybe uh, all the different temperatures, so maybe say it's four or five different temperatures, all prepared at the same time, and then dunk, 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 all they go in and you start your 10 minutes and then you take them out. So you don't want to be doing one experiment, record the measurement, then start your second one. You really want to have several going at the same time to save yourself a lot of headache. Thanks, well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching.